From humiliating dunk to being clowned by little kids. One legend even pants the player mid-game and got scored on anyway. Open your mouth wide and take it. There's a lot of ways NBA players been getting humiliated. Like when Aaron Gordon embarrassed someone so badly, they got turned into a diamond chain. Cause during a close game with barely any time left, Aaron got the ball and the rest was history. So in the 30 seconds, Gordon and Aaron. <laughs> now all right, even though dude almost had a seizure or whatever the hell that was, the refs eventually counted the dunk so the play went viral. I mean, I already knew it was gonna be remembered forever. Then Aaron took things to another level by not only posting a pic of it and calling it dunk of the year, he sent it to a jeweler just so they turned the pic into a custom diamond chain. Ooh, this thing's so ridiculous, it's honestly the only time giving another dude neck was okay. But at least dude only got humiliated for one play. The Pistons whole team has had such a humiliating season, it's got fans wanting to assassinate him. Just take a look at the standings, man. As of right now, the Pistons are at the bottom of the league, dead last, with two wins and 26 losses. Yeah, we're not two and 26 bad. No way are we that bad. Uh, actually you are that bad, bro. Matter of fact, you're even worse. This is historically bad. This is so bad, ladies and gentlemen. The Detroit Pistons, dating back to last season over the last 49 games, they are four and 45. Four and 45. It's been more than a month and a half since they won a game. It's very, very bad. Yeah, Watch the Pistons camera. have been Watch playing so badly and losing so many games that even Wingstop tried to help out by motivating their squad with a promo. Wingstop promised free wings to fans for every Pistons win, and I wasn't gonna act like I wasn't hyped. Wingstop wings are fire. But ever since that came out, the Pistons just kept losing and losing and losing, so fans would just post memes about how they were never getting anything free until one game was the worst of this entire situation, though. December 21st, 2023 was supposed to be a historic day where the Pistons' <clears throat> 24-game losing streak would finally come to an end because they weren't just going up against any team. The Jazz were in town. And not only were they also ass, a few of their best players were sitting out, so what could go wrong? Secchio to the basket, Dunn stripped him. Sexton to the basket, flips it up. Dave Nivey to the paint, lost the handle. Olenek lobs it. Collins with a jam. Ugh. I'd laugh, but the Pistons were suffering enough. Besides, when it got pretty obvious that the Jazz were gonna win, not only did Pistons fans start chanting to sell the team, proved to be a bit of a silver lining for the Pistons. The 117 they've given up. Some fans literally put trash bags on their heads so they wouldn't get recognized there. Then when the Jazz officially won, fans posted that the Pistons should hang a banner just because it was a huge accomplishment they only lost by single digits this time. And even the Jazz themselves turned the game into a meme afterwards. Hey, Patrick. What? I thought of something funnier than 24. Let me hear it. 25. <laughs> but see, things didn't turn deadly there on Twitter. That happened on Reddit. Fans were really debating if the Pistons should just kill five of their players to trigger a disaster draft to improve their roster. Because the NBA rules state that if five or more players on a team die, they're allowed to pick that many players from other teams around the league. So just think about that. The Pistons have been playing so bad, fans would rather their team just die so they could just start over. No wonder why people are already saying prayers for their star player. But to be honest, I'm just saying prayers for Michael Jordan. You know. The bald dude who got humiliated by his own fan in a 1v1? Usually it's the other way around because most times when MJ gets into competitions with fans, he's the one humiliating. Like when he played a fan who was dressed as Kobe, then packed his ass before scoring the game winning shot on him. But there was also a time he humiliated a kid less than half his size by dunking on him. But one of MJ's opponents was a little different. Just look at this ugly ass dude. He's non-basketball player, investment banker, John Rogers. And he was like a lot of fans who showed up to one of MJ's camps where he was just hoping he'd get lucky enough to play against the GO. But this is where history was about to be made. I used to go to his senior flight school, which is a fantasy camp for people 35 years and older. And so every summer at the camp, he would challenge any camper to a short game of one-on-one, uh, -on -one, first to three wins. Don't be mad at me, I'm just too good for you. I think I had this camp just so y'all can beat me. Even though I wasn't a, a good passer, I was a good one-on-one -on -one player. And so I had a couple of tricky shots. Oh. Oh. Nice job, John. 
And the last tricky shot, right as it was about to go in, you can hear Michael say on the video, oh no. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Dude really lost in basketball. Someone who works a normal job? That's some of y'all's go? <sighs> Whatever y'all say, man. Now, it's one thing to be humiliated by a fan. Draymond Green got humiliated by a UFC fighter. Who the f is that? It's all because lately, Big Boy's been thinking he's tough. From kicking a player in the nuts, to stomping players out, he even put a grown man in a headlock, then a few days later, tried knocking someone out. Ooh. Oh, man. Well, that's gonna be a flight grab. It got so bad to the point where fans literally turned Draymond into an actual fighter in wrestling games. So of course the league suspended him because he's in the NBA, not the UFC. But Draymond even tried battling someone from that before. Legendary fighter, Conor McGregor. At the time, Conor was getting ready for one of the biggest fights ever against Floyd Mayweather. And cameras caught him casually in a number 23 Warriors jersey. Now, a jersey of that team and that number, it's what Draymond was currently wearing, and what he did next proved he either didn't f with Connor or the fact that dude was apparently wearing his jersey, so he reposted the pic saying, We rocking with Floyd, bro, not you. Take that off, bro. And this is where things got crazy. Because Connor pointed out that it wasn't even Draymond's jersey. He said, That's CJ Watson, mate. I don't know who the f you are. No disrespect though, kid. Keep hustling and stay in school. I don't know or give a f about basketball. I dribble heads off the floor, not a ball. This is no game here, kid. Now, Draymond did respond one more time saying, that number won't be worn again when I'm finished with it, clown. Gold medalist, NBA champ, defensive player of the year. Haha, <laughs> stop it, boy. Nate Diaz whooped you in your ring. Money may about to destroy you. You're an incredible internet troll. We don't rock with you. Go train, bum. And after saying all of that, still, nobody thought Draymond won. Who won this trash talk, Connor or Draymond? Connor won by knockout of Draymond Green. Draymond Green basically got punked by Connor McGregor. Now, in the end, I was kind of thinking about this like, who even cares about Draymond anyways? That dude is trash. But what if I told you there's a team that got humiliated by Steph Curry so badly, it had NBA legends calling him the GO. I'm wondering is it time to start putting him as the best player of all time? Or when Lonzo Ball got humiliated worse than anybody ever in a rap battle. How you gonna stop James Harden and you can't even stop acting? But before I get to that, now that it's Christmas time, and you know, of course I'm in the Christmas spirit, me and my boys at DraftKings teamed up to give you guys a special gift. Cause right now, if you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up using my promo code HoopFlix, and place a bet worth just $5, it'll instantly turn into $150 worth of bonus bets deposited right in your DraftKings account. Then you can use that to bet on any DraftKings parlays for a chance of an even bigger payout. Now, all right, if you happen to already have an account like me, though, I got something special for you, too. All customers can get a no sweat bet, which means if it doesn't hit, you get another bonus bet back to use in the future. Max reward limits apply. And if sports betting is somehow not yet available in your state, don't worry, man. I got you, too. You can still join in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. So to be honest, I'm not sure why you haven't downloaded the app already. It's easy, man. Just remember to use my promo code HoopFlix to get in on the fun. And of course, thank you to my boys at DraftKings. But anyways. It's pretty known that Steph Curry's had a humiliating rivalry with the Boston Celtics. A few years back, he punked Jalen Brown by hitting a three on him, then yelling, I own your ass. Then in the NBA Finals, Steph also taunted the Celtics by hitting a shot, before taunting the crowd by pointing at his ring finger to basically say the ring was gonna be his, and he also hit another shot, then taunted again with a night-night go-to-sleep type of celebration. Once things were official though, and Steph won the championship, not only did he eventually admit what he felt he was to Boston, Proud daddy of the Boston Celtics. After that, fans made sure to remind Celtics players what's good. <laughs> so the Celtics obviously took all that personally, and one of the next times they saw Steph, you could tell they weren't over it. Even though Steph started things off with a layup, the Celtics started pulling away and dominating all game long. But things got really interesting in the third quarter, because Jalen Brown bodied Steph to put him into foul trouble. Brown bumping, firing, and the foul. And not long after, Jalen not only went right back at him to score again, this time, Jalen taunted him by saying Steph was too small, which was a big mistake. Yeah, it was 83-70 with the Celtics pulling away, Steph only one foul away from being kicked out the game, and he was struggling. But even though in those three quarters Steph had just 13 points, Jalen's taunt woke him up real quick. Maybe they'll get a three out of it. Curry three. <laughs> In the Tatum. Up and down. Curry long three. Curry step back triple. Oh, he gathers it in. Clock it three. Curry three. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he hit him with the night night again. Steph went off scoring 20 more points so fast. I didn't even think I was watching Steph Curry. I thought I was watching Jesus Christ. I wonder why that game had NBA legends feeling like dude deserved to be called the best player ever. I'm wondering is it time to start putting him as the best player of all time. I played 20 years, watched 20 years before that. I've never seen a guy like him, and he's doing it consistently, and he has championships. Now, all right, to be honest, usually Shaq's tripping, man. This time I kind of agree, though, because of how much Steph's been accomplishing and how many times he's humiliated teams. But nobody's been humiliated during a loss as many times as Paul George. Because when games are on the line with a chance to win or tie, Paul's defense has gotten him humiliated so many times, it set an NBA record. There's a reason I can search on YouTube about it, and it pops up entire compilations. That's a bad, bad shot. Oh. Oh! I mean, that's a bad, bad shot. Battier gets it in. Here's James on the cross for the win. Bad shot. For the win. Bad. Lillard, long range three. And it's good. I mean, that's a bad, bad shot. Man. <laughs> You gotta feel bad for PG, cause dude's gonna have the weakest D in NBA history. He's let players tire win the game more than anybody ever, but at least he's only gotten humiliated during basketball games. Lonzo Ball got humiliated during a rap battle. These are personal shots. I can't take this. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. To understand some of the bars that are about to come, you first gotta understand Lonzo's career so far. We're talking about an ugly ass dude who's one of the most hyped up young kids ever coming into the league. That man's dropped his own shoe that was an overpriced shit stain, so of course it absolutely failed. Then Lonzo tried to redeem himself by doing what he was paid to do, playing basketball, and instead of being a star, he was absolutely ass. God damn. So man's bounced from team to team like a side piece, while also having a side job, rapping. But honestly, I don't know who told dude he was good enough to keep dropping songs, cause once he faced off in a battle with one of the most iconic rappers in the game, T-Pain, dude ended both Alonzo's careers. And the thought of you playing defense is kinda wacky. How you gonna stop James Harden and you can't even stop acting? I can tell that you shook, you wanna turn and run. How's your last name ball when you ain't got none? How'd you make shoes that are worse than your flows? Even blind people are like, what are those? Wow, I don't know what Lonzo's laughing at, but there's no coming back from that. Get humiliated. But sometimes getting humiliated ain't about what NBA players say or do. It's cause of what they wear. I swear some NBA players have the worst fashion choices I've ever seen. Like, what the hell are even these outfits, man? Kyle Kuzma's down worse than most players in the league though, I can't even lie. We're talking about a man who dresses like a gay poo shiesty. Dude even posts some of his fits thinking they're hard, so players clown him for it. And sometimes he even gets clowned in the locker room. During games is when Kuzma gets humiliated the most though. Cause not only is he absolute dog shit, commentators make sure Kuzma's ugly outfits don't go unnoticed. Did you see how he arrived today? Oh wow, that is wow. Oh, please. Oh. But is it a dress? Is it a jacket? Did he just go to the big and tall store and pick up the first thing he saw? <laughs> it looks something. That's the aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Aluminum Conspiracy fit. theory, Kuzma. Aluminum fit. Now, all right, as ugly as his fits might be, as much as players clown him on social media, and even though his own team thought his fit was so ugly they turned into a bobblehead just so everybody would talk about it, Russell Westbrook's fits are even worse. I don't wear anything for nobody. I wear what I want to wear when I want to wear. Uh, whatever you say, man. It's rumored that dude spends around 350k a year on clothes, which is crazy cause dude still has no drip. Westbrook really dressed up for the wrong job by showing up to an NBA game as a photographer. There were even the times he put things on that made him look like a homeless man, so of course he got clowned. What the hell? Just to, come on, man. Come on, Kevin, you can't wear that. that. Come on, man. Host the Wizards. Why can't he wear that? Cause it looks awful. But the worst outfit Westbrook put on had to be the one when he was a grown ass man wearing a dress. I don't worry about old gangsters, bro. If you put on a dress, you a bitch. To be honest, though, Westbrook ain't really the one to be getting clowned by other NBA legends often, even though he should. James Harden, on the other hand, I mean, you see the fit. So it ain't hard to tell why he's about to get humiliated. 
Surveys literally voted him as the worst dressed NBA player ever. This is a dude who shows up to basketball wearing pajamas. Yeah, dude really couldn't change his fit before showing up somewhere. That's crazy, but not as crazy as some of his other fits, though. Man, what the hell is that? What, you don't like his outfit? I hell no, I don't like, I like his, his outfit. outfit. Man, and, damn. How about this fit, Chuckster? That's like the Muppets, ain't it? Now, if I were Harden, obviously I'd get a new stylist, but I'd also hate on that NBA legend Charles Barkley for always hating on me. It's kind of like LeBron's beef with a legend over getting their career turned into me. Or how Damian Lillard and another NBA legend had their own families fight each other. And don't even get me started on Dwight Howard and Shaq's beef over some <clears throat> toys, if you know what I mean. It's all here, so just click this video, man. Otherwise, I'm gonna cry myself to sleep again tonight. I need to pay my bills, man. Can you just click it?